So question 20, back to the polynomial. No again, we have a trinomial. But again, if we look at our checklist over here, notice that if we look for a greatest common factor, the 11, the 16, and the 12, there really isn't any uh, wiggle room there. 11 is a prime number, and 11 does not go evenly into 16 or 12. So it doesn't look like the greatest common factor is going to work. To be a difference of squares, it's got to be two terms. It's not a perfect square trinomial. Again, 11 nor the 12 are perfect squares, so that's off the board. So really, um, what we'll pick up on is we're going to factor a second degree trinomial in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So what I can pick up on then is if I want to, I can guess and check because I know this is going to, again, I need to give myself a little bit of room. Notice how again, um, 11x squared is really one possibility because 11 is prime. 11x times x or x times 11x. Now the catch is, is this uh, negative 12. You know, there are one and 12 and two and six and three and four. Notice how there's a lot of possibilities now for um, for the negative 12. But the catch is I have to add it to this negative 16. So I've already got this 11x there. So, but notice how, since this is negative, I'm actually going to be subtracting to get this 16. So one of the things, you know, the one and 12, I really don't see that happening. The two and six has some potential. So I'm going to kind of play with this two and the six. So if I put a, a six there and a two there, so then if I put um, a positive here and a negative, because I need a, a negative 12, so I know that um, the catch here now is to get the uh, the middle term. So if I'm apply the outer terms together, I'm getting a negative twenty two x, and if I'm apply the inner terms together, I'm getting a six x. Does negative twenty two x and a six x give me a negative sixteen? So if I go um, negative twenty two plus six. Well, notice how it does give me this negative 16. So yeah, that's that's the factorization. So I kind of fell into it. Um, so I guess I've done some of these. It kind of comes a little bit more intuitive. That I wasn't aware that I was even going in the right direction. Um, now, if you need a little bit more structure, if you want to use the box method, it's a good way to group as well so four square partition off this is how a trinomial is going to work so remember the quadratic term the 11x squared is going to go on the top left the constant which is the negative 12 goes in the bottom right now to use four square the, the catch is is we got to multiply this 11 times this negative 12 So if we multiply the 11 times the negative 12, so if we multiply the leading coefficient times the constant, that gives us this negative 132. So if I'm using my four square and my big T, in big T, I actually got to be using a negative 132. And the catch is you still got to be adding to get this negative 16. So the next 16 still comes into play here. So I need my factors of negative 132, or in other words, my factors of 132. So again, if you use the Y equals button on your calculator, you can type in 132 divided by X and it will make you a table. So if you use Y equals this 132 divided by X, we can use the table on our calculator to make a table for us. So if I go to the table, notice how that's in blue. So hit second table. So notice 1 times 32 would be there, 1 times 132. 
two times 66, three times 44, six times 22, and 11 times 12. So 11 times 12 would also be there. Now to get that negative 16 though, what I'm picking up on is this 22 and six again. So, but to get a negative 132, one of them's gotta be negative. To get a negative 16, the bigger number's gotta be negative. So my thinking is I need this six and this 22, but the 22 has got to be negative. So as we said, negative 22 plus six does give me that negative 16. So this becomes my linear terms in my box. So the again, it doesn't matter where you put these. Um, I can put the six X here and the negative 22 X down here. It doesn't matter where you put those. Now, the catch is you want to identify the GCF of this top row. And the way I put it, the only thing that's in common between 11x squared and a 6x would just be x. So this x is actually going to come out. And then we just start piecing it together. What times x is 11x squared? Well, we need 11x there. x times 11x is 11x squared. What times x is 6x? Well, we need a 6. x times 6 is 6x. Then if we come down here, what times 11x gives me this negative 22? Well, that has to be a negative two. Again, if you wanted to double check, you could use your calculator and use division. Uh, negative 22 divided by 11, that's how you can find a missing factor. That's how it does give me negative two, so it does work. Negative two times 11x gives me negative 22x. And does negative two times six give me this negative 12? It does. So notice how the 11x plus six and the x minus two becomes my factorization. So in the box method, you're seeing x minus two times 11x plus six. No sort of does not matter there in that.